नीलावती कासनाळे गुड इव्हनिंग एव्हरी वन मायसेल्फ डॉक्टर नीलावती कासनाळे वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सोसायटी ऑफ अनेस्थेशोलॉजी पिंपरी चिंचवड इन दिस व्हेरी इंटरेस्टिंग अँड इंटरॅक्टिव्ह वेबिनार ऑन पिडॅटिक अनेस्थेशिया For this webinar, we have our own SAPC members who are the speakers, Dr. Ashish, Patni, Ashish Kumar Patni, who is our new SAPC member, Dr. Himan Shir Sagar sir, and respected Dr. Major General Shahabaz Hasnai sir. Sir is a professor and HOD in Department of Anesthesiology, Dr. D.Y. Patil Pim, Medical College, Pimpri, Pune. Sir has done his MBBS and MD from AFMC, Pune. Sir, he took a long-term training PDCC in cardiac anesthesia at AIMS Delhi. Sir is having 36 years of experience in highly regarded medical and military professional having experience in cardiac anesthesia. Sir is an ex-professor and HOD, AFMC Pune. Sir is an ex-commandant in Command Command Hospital Pune. He was a Dean Academics, Command Hospital Kolkata. Sir has a combat medical experience in Operation Vijay Kargil and DRAS. He was head of medical division in Northern Sector during active operations. Sir is an examiner for DNB and MD examinations. He has various publications in national and international journals. His area of interest is pediatric, uh, sorry, adult cardiac anesthesia. Today in this webinar, sir will share his experience and will throw some light on this pediatric anesthesia in the interactive session. We have also Dr. Sonal Khatakar, Madam, Professor in Department of Anesthesia, Dr. P D.Y. Patil Medical College, Pimpri. Madam is highly experienced in pediatric anesthesia. So in the interactive session, so she will also share her experience for this pediatric patients. Our president, Maya Maya Bhalero, Madam, will join after some time. I now request our secretary, Dr. Seema Suryanshi, Madam, to welcome on. Uh, thank you, Dr. Neelavati. Good evening, everyone. Once again, I welcome Dr. Hasnain, sir, HOD Anastasia at D.Y. Patil Medical College, and our today's speaker, Dr. Ashish Patni, Dr. Heman Shirsagar, who are, a very, who are very enthusiastic member, and they have really uh, worked hard on this uh, topic in a very short while. So uh, today's webinar topic is pediatric anesthesia, challenges in private setup. As you all know, pediatric anesthesia itself is a challenging job uh, with unique challenges. So, uh, and more so when done in a private freelancing setup uh, in a short, uh, small nursing homes. So let us hear from our SAPC members how to go ahead and manage the difficult cases or the pediatric cases. Uh, thank you, everyone, and please uh, join in for the webinar. Thanks, Seema. Now, without wasting much time, we all will hear from our speakers. As we all know, children are not small adults. Pediatric anesthesia involves more than simply adjusting drug doses and equipments for smaller patients. So, pediatric patients are different in many aspects. So, we will hear from Dr. Ashish Kumar Patnisar how they are different. I will introduce Dr. Ashish Kumar Patnisar. He has done his MBBS. From, from Government Medical College, Miras. He has done MBA in Healthcare Administration uh, from MUHS Regional Center, Aund Pune. Now he is a guest faculty there. Sir has done DA from Cyan Hospital, Mumbai. He worked as a Government Medical of, uh, Officer at various places. Now he is working in Regional Mental Hospital, Ayurveda. I, now I request Dr. Ashish Kumar Patnisar, please start uh, with his presentation. And we will take question answers in the interactive session after the two, uh, both speakers' presentation. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, kind words and introduction. Now, uh, I would like to go ahead with the presentation. <clears throat> Pediatric anesthesia. As uh, Seema ma'am has rightly said, that children are not small adults. And so we will see how they are different and how we go ahead for the uh, pediatric anesthesia. So pediatric group, group includes preterm, neonate, infants, children, and adolescent group. As you can see here, the preterm age group is when the child has been born before 37 weeks of gestation and neonate till four weeks of after birth infant till 12 months, child which can further be divided into toddlers, uh, preschoolers and school going children 
from 1 to 12 years of age and adolescents from 13 to 16 years of age and they are not miniature adult because they have different anatomy physiology pharmacology and even psychology in anatomy if we can see neonates are obligate nasal breathers and infants have really relatively large tongue hence difficult mask holding and laryngoscopy they have narrowed long and angulated epiglottis more cephalic glottis that we can see at the level of c3 in neonates at level of c4 vertebra in infants and c5 vertebra in adults the narrowest part of the uh, <clears throat> upper airway is the subglottic region and so the airway resistance in infants and children can be increased dramatically by even a small amount of edema as we can see here the children have a large tongue their epiglottis is floppier and is u shaped the larynx is funnel shaped and the narrowest part is subglottic region they have a disproportionately uh, larger heads bigger tongues and poor cervical spine support and the tracheal length is also smaller so we need to keep that in mind while going ahead with the intubation the pulmonary system has higher oxygen needs and they need about 6 ml per kg per minute of metabolic rate higher respiratory rate and minute ventilation they have high minute ventilation to frc ratio and rapid inhalational induction the major muscle of ventilation is diaphragm and it fatigues earlier than adults because it has 50% type 1 fibers it attains adult size by the age of 2 years the alveolar maturation takes around 8 to 10 years of age cardiovascular system the heart rate and blood pressure vary according to age and uh, it uh, the children have higher rest, uh, heart rate and lower blood pressures cardiac output is 180 to 240 ml per kg per minute in newborns which is twice of adults the ventricles are less compliant and they are smaller they are having smaller contractile muscle mass in newborns and infants the cardiac output increases with increase in heart rate the immature calcium signaling and handling of sarcoplasmic reticulum in myocardium that's why they are more dependent in uh, on ionized calcium for myocardial function the types of circulation in children which we can see are fetal circulation transitional circulation and neonatal circulation as we all know the fetal circulation we have foramen obliquus which is patent then uh, they have patent ductus arteriosus and uh, through the placenta umbilical arteries and veins they carry the blood now this circulation after birth changes into neonatal circulation where the uh, foramen obliquus is uh, closed physiologically first and the patent uh, the ductus arteriosus is also closed physiologically and over a time period of 4 uh, to 6 weeks to one uh, <clears throat> one year the uh, foramen ovel and ductus arteriosus both close down and the uh, ventilation is uh, rather than from placenta is taken care of by the lungs after the first breath the renal system is immature in the children and it takes uh, around 1 to 2 years to mature it the glomerular glomerular function maturates by around 20 weeks of age the gfr at birth is 40 ml per minute at 2 years is 96 ml per minute and in adults it is 125 ml per minute the prolonged half life of drugs excreted by kidney like vecuronium opioids so there is impaired ability okay. to excrete okay. free water rangle babun rasal babun paige The liver is functionally immature at birth, which leads to physiological jaundice and prolonged high half life of drugs metabolized by liver. They have low albumin level. Also, 
protein bound drugs may have higher free fraction and higher effective concentration they are prone to coagulopathy so vitamin k is given in newborn to prevent hemorrhagic disorders children have minimal glycogen stores that's why they are prone to hypoglycemia and acidosis infants of diabetic mothers <clears throat> they have high insulin levels to compensate with the increased exposure to serum glucose levels of mother therefore after the birth they are more prone to hypoglycemia the central nervous system has poorly formed blood brain barrier so the drugs can easily cross the blood brain barrier and have higher concentrations in the central nervous system the cerebral vessels in preterm infants are thin walled fragile the neonates have cerebral blood flow of 30 to 40 ml per 100 g blood tissue per minute compared to adults who have 55 ml per 100 g brain tissue per minute the narcotics depress the ventilation response to a rise in pseo2 that's why uh, <clears throat> the patient does not come out quickly nerves are thinner with less myelination so lower concentration of local anesthetic is required during uh, epidural or caudal anesthesia the anatomic differences are spinal cord ends at the level of l3 less than 1 years and more than 1 years it is at the level of l1 the dural sac extends up to s2 to s4 less than 1 years of age and more than 1 years it is at the level of s2 the toughest line is at the level of l5 to s1 in uh, infants and at the level of l5 more than 1 years of age sacrum is more narrow and flat that's why <coughs> uh, we are more prone to go inside deeper at birth the sacral plate formed by uh, five sacral vertebra is not completely ossified until 8 years of age which helps us in giving caudal anesthesia hematologically 70 to 90% of uh, hb molecules are hbf at birth but by age of 3 months the hbf is drops to 5% and hba predominates while this change is happening the bone marrow is not fully mature that's why normal hemoglobin in newborns is around 18 to 20 g per dl and over 3 to 6 months when the blood volume increases more than the hemoglobin the hemoglobin comes down to 9 to 12 g per dl which is called as physiological anemia the oxygen dissociation curve shifts to the right as well as hba and 2 3 dpg rise in preterm neonates the blood volume is 90 to 100 ml per kg term neonates it is 80 to 9 85 to 90 infants 80 to 85 and adults has 70 ml per kg of blood volume now temperature regulation it is a major difference in adults and children because children have large surface area compared to their weight they have minimal subcutaneous fat and they have non shivering thermogenesis through brown fat which is used in non shivering thermogenesis it needs large quantities of oxygen so o2 requirement during non shivering thermogenesis is increased so is the risk of acidosis heat loss during anesthesia is mostly via radiation the effects of low body temperature are respiratory depression acidosis decreased cardiac output increases in the duration of action of drugs decrease in platelet function increased risk of infection hypoglycemia and we can see practically that there is delayed recovery measures to prevent heat loss we need to maintain optimal operation theater temperature we can use warming mattresses wrapping limbs and head in gamzy warming and humidification of inspired gases warming of iv fluids warming of skin disinfected solutions and use of warmer during transport some of the measures we can see here warming mattress warm air blowers 
pharmacologically they are low they have low albumin so highly protein brown drugs i have more free fraction and greater pharmacological effects in such cases we may need to use lower concentrations of the drug they have more fat and less muscle mass so fat soluble drugs have larger initial peak levels for example opioids and they are more sensitive to muscle relaxants the pre operative assessment apart from our regular adult assessment we need to check if the child has fever cold cough if the child had cyanotic spells sucrous sex cycle recurrent chest infection tuberculosis any history of convulsions associated uh, association of convulsions with the fever lethargy decreased appetite excessive crying sleeping any episodes of vomiting or gerd inability to pass stools worm infestation uh, in a country like india where children are moving around freely worm infestations are quite common history of allergy to egg soy sulfa others genetic disorders maternal history if mother had pih eclampsia drug abuse and the birth history of the child like pre term term post term vaginal or lscs the cause of uh, lscs whether the baby cried immediately after birth or not if not then any history of nicu stay ventilatory support and phototherapy needs to be ass- assessed the examination is it goes uh, as like adults with some parameters like weight capillary refill time any syndromic look which gets our attention more whether the child is irritable or playful in airway examination just like all uh, our adult evaluation we check with the mouth opening slugs malampatti classification neck movement dentition the children in the age group of uh, 5 to 10 years they have uh, more tendency to have loose teeth so we, that we need to look after <clears throat> the thyromental distance is not very useful because the children have a uh, large uh, fat in the neck region in case the child is uncooperative or less than 2 years of age we can look for any obvious signs of facial deformity like cleft lip cleft palate or micromegalia or whether the tongue is large compared to the jaw perioperative fasting this is a important factor because children they can't tolerate hunger so clear liquids like water clear tea black coffee carbonated beverages or fruit juice without pulp or even some glucose water can be given for a minimum period of fasting of 2 hours breast milk can be given up to 4 hours before surgery non human milk including infant formula can be given at least 6 hours prior to surgery light meals are allowed just like in adults till 6 hours and regular and heavy meals for 8 hours fasting infants have greater fluid needs compared to adults because they uh, lose more uh, water through perspiration and through urine they have higher rates of metabolism and growth higher surface area to weight ratio immature skin so evaporative loss is more greater urinary excretion so type of fluid usually in the children we prefer isotonic fluid with addition of dextrose because they are more prone to hypoglycemia so premature neonates we can use 10% glucose for term neonates we use 5% glucose in addition to rl or ns obviously and older infants 2.5% glucose more than one year age 1% glucose we can use burette set for children less than 10 kg and micro drip set for children more than 10 kg of weight <clears throat> the maintenance fluid is calculated by holiday cigar formula by 4 to 1 that is 4 ml per kg up to 10 uh, 10 kg of weight 2 ml per kg we add 
for each 10 k each kg about 10 kg up to 20 kg and 1 ml per kg we add for each kg about 20 kg but this is the maintenance fluid for third space loss and fluid deficits we need to replace it with the starvation fluid of uh, hours of starvation into maintenance fluid if blood loss is more than 10% we give blood if not available crystalloids are given in the ratio of 1 is to 3 and colloids in the ratio of 1 is to 1 uh, this is the chart through which we can prepare the uh, dextrose containing fluids for a 500 ml pint 10% uh, solution is prepared with 100 cc of 50% dextrose and proportionately 200 cc of 25% dextrose and uh, hence forth pre medication in children uh, various modes of pre medication are uh, used to calm the while coming to the ot we can use oral sublingual intramuscular which hurts and uh, sterile abscess can happen which is rarely used nowadays and intravenous intravenous route is preferred nasal sprays can also be used but they can be irritating the airway equipments for uh, children are of uh, we need to use of up size and laryngoscope blade we uh, usually we have curved blades in adults like macintosh but in children we use straight blades of millers supraglottic airway devices like igel and lms of up size we can use the endotracheal tubes we use in children uh, earlier only uncuffed tubes were uh, available but now smaller size cuff tubes are also available from the size of 3 and as per requirement we can use them face marks stylet and nagel forcer the endotracheal tube size in pediatric patient can be calculated for children less than 6 years of age with age upon 3 plus 3.5 for example <clears throat> if the child is of 6 years so age by 3 is 2 plus 3.5 is 5.5 but for a child more than 6 years age upon 4 plus 4.5 so for a child of 8 years 8 upon 4 is 2 plus 4.5 that goes to 6.5 generally we do not go up uh, for size more than uh, 6 in children formula for calculating depth of insertion of endotracheal tube age upon 2 plus 12 for a child of 1 years of age we go for 12 cm up to 12 cm mark Jackson Reed circuit, as we all know, this is the circuit which is preferred for uh, pediatric anesthesia. The monitoring is uh, <coughs> as usual for adults, but temperature monitoring has very much important role to play in pediatric age groups. The take-home message is holiday cigar formula for fluid management. The inter-diameter inter uh, calculation of endotracheal tubes, uh, as we have seen. and the key parameters which we need to maintain are euthermia euglycemia euvolemia just additional point of caudal anesthesia drug calculation is added here thank you okay thank you ashish kumar sir for a wonderful presentation we will have a interactive session once both presentations will over i request everyone to put their question in the chat box we will discuss them later on now our uh, next speaker is our own well known scpc member dr himan shir sagar sir as we all know about his interest in pediatric anesthesia and regional blocks sir has done his mbps md anesthesia after which he done fellowship in iapm he is a interventional pain specialist fellow in burn care he has his own pain clinic kankur pain clinic chinchwad pune international burn center bhosri pune he is highly skilled in pediatric anesthesia regional blocks labor analgesia and burn management pains regional anesthesia is an essential and growing part of pediatric anesthesia it has applications in virtually all aspects of surgical and procedural pain and our this speaker dr hemant shir sagar is highly skilled in pediatric regional blocks also 
And now we let's hear from him how he manages his pediatric patient. I request Dr. Heyman, sir, please start his presentation. Yeah, very good evening, ma'am. Thanks for those absolutely kind words. Just let me share my screen to all of you. Is it visible now? Hello? Yes, sir, ah, it is visible. Yes, yes, it is yeah, visible. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible yes. also. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for uh, patience. Before starting my actual talk, let me welcome you all for this wonderful virtual meeting, which includes the pediatric anesthesia and its uh, cases, which I have done for last almost 20 years, 22 years back. So before starting my talk, let me have uh, wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year 2022, because hope so this year brings you a lot of happiness and uh, Corona free life to all of you. So before starting my lecture, I request all of you, please mute your microphone. So greetings from my, my side. So my talk, as Madam already mentioned, how I did it. These are the four cases I wanted to cover in today's virtual meeting, which includes tracheoesophageal fistula repair. Second case is of obstructed inguinal hernia repair. Third case is a neonatal teratoma excision. And last one is a bronchoscopy. So first case I would like to discuss with you, that is the tracheoesophageal fistula. This is three days old, two kg. I can't say it's not a premature or mature child. It's in between that, it's 34, 36 weeks. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Heyman, just yeah. a while. Huh. Are you sharing your screen because we are not able to see uh, see your screen? Yes, yes. Are you uh, have you started sharing your presentations? Just a minute. No, I just already no, started the sharing presentation. Just no, a minute. No, no. Uh, Himan, your uh, screen is not seen. Only laptop screen is seen. Yeah, I think you have not shared the screen. Uh, so your uh, all files we can see, but your presentation is not seen not there. Good. Just a minute. You have to open the is files. It, is it visible now? No no, 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 no. You click on one of the file now, which you I want. And then open, open it. Yeah. Hmm. Just a minute. Huh? I think Nilavati said, yes, yes, she can see. So I thought it is my problem. So I did not say anything. No, no. <laughs> I am. I was also surprised whether the problem is with my <laughs> device. I think you need to click on uh, your PEDS case new and then it will start. I think so. That is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now we are uh, able to see your uh, slide PEDS case new and I think you need to start your slideshow full screen. Okay. Is it okay now? Is it visible? It is visible, but uh, just start your slideshow with a full screen. You already it's a full screen. No, no, it is not a full screen. It's PPT full screen. presentation like Kali uh, symbol eto techar click. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, it is showing all your uh, slides basically. You need to start the slideshow. Uh, yes. Right hand side la uh, corner like kahe bak. It is like a cup like yes. okay, okay. Ha, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, now yeah. it's visible, sir. Now visible. Okay, sorry for the technical interference. No issues. <laughs> Just a minute. Give me one minute, please. Mm. 
is it visible now yes yes, yes it is visible yeah now it's okay yeah, yeah i think okay. it's okay hmm. yeah now these are the four cases today i would like to cover in this virtual meeting which includes tracheoesophageal fistula repair obstructed inguinal hernia repair in a neonate then uh, teratoma excision of a neonate and lastly a uh, 3 years or uh, 3 to 4 years old with the bronchoscopy so first case i would like to discuss that is a tracheoesophageal fistula repair this is 3 days old 2 kg male child 32 to 34 weeks it's a postnatally diagnosed tracheoesophageal fistula which is posted <laughs> for the surgical repair so uh, there are so many people are in, in this virtual meeting those they are senior to me but as in last 20 years i'm in anesthesia practice what I, I have learned in this those 20 years just i want to to elaborate or just concise it in a in a way anesthesia is like a takeoff for the takeoff you need a preparation that preparation is outside ot or inside ot for this particular case in a tracheoesophageal fistula repair, what is the preparation that we would like to do in outside operation theater? In this, what I will suggest, the moment the tracheoesophageal fistula was diagnosis has been done, that baby has to be shifted to the NICU where the NICU care is good. Second important thing, we need to prevent aspiration. To prevent aspiration, we need to do continuous suction but that suction pressure should be always less than 100 centimeter of water. Also very important, we need to take a written consent of the patient's relatives. So what type of preparation inside OT? Inside OT as Dr. Ashish has already covered well, I'm not going to go into detail, but your OT should be warm because in a neonate or any pediatric patient, hypothermia is really, really very, very bad. As today's our chairperson is from a military background, so he must be knowing what is the importance of landing. So any patient who is without, once the surgery has been completed and to get back to his normal thought process or normal this thing, for that we should have a landing not like this. This is a very painful landing. We don't want this type of landing in our anesthesia patient. Our landing should be like this, though in on the highway, but our plane should be land safely, like this child. This child is almost 14 days post-op surgery. We discharge this child with the drain, but it's absolutely fine without any problem and without any post-op ventilation. In my almost last 10 years of neonatal practice, we have done 32 to 33 tracheoesophageal fistula repair cases and that too without post-op ventilation. I used to extubate all these patients on OT table itself after the completion of surgery. For that matter, I have a very nice video of this baby. Is it visible? This video is visible to you? Yes, Hello? it is visible. Yes, it is visible, sir. This is the post-op video. Uh, yes, sir. So this is the right thoracotomy, right, right lateral position, the pulsating heart. This is the baby post-operatively after completion of the surgery. Look at his breathing. After the procedure, we shifted this baby to NICU with uh, an analgesia in the form of caudal epidural. The dose we have adjusted is 0.1 ml per kg per hour, that is 0.1% rupin plus fentanyl. Look at the child, how comfortably he's breathing as if there is no thoracotomy. So this is the child after 15th day of post-op day. So my second case is obstructed inguinal hernia. This is absolutely very interesting case. It's a 1.1 kg, almost 29 to 30 weeks. He is a very premature. 
uh, birth history that is almost long uh, IVF pregnancy. And this child was with bilateral hernia with right-sided obstruction. This child presented with apneic spells. Probably this is a very poor child who went to a lot of other government hospitals, but unfortunately none other hospital has accepted this patient. And finally, this patient came to one of uh, private nurse in private institute, pediatric institute. In that institute, we have done emergency repair of the hernia, and we have also repaired, uh, done his left-sided hernia. Lab is within acceptable limits. This is his video. This is right-sided obstructed hernia. Look at his breathing pattern. And now you, very carefully you watch, there is a, so look at this apneic spells. The child stops in between. Yeah, now again started. So there is probably almost 25 to 30 seconds lag in between two breaths. So we decided we should not give any anesthesia except regional. In that regional, I have to give one point almost as Ashish mentioned the dose in uh, thoracolumbar, it's one ml per kg. As I understood, there is probably the chances there must be a bogel in the invinal hernia. So I gave 1.25 milligram per kg the dose. And look at the, how comfortably child, is, child was sleeping during surgery. This is a post-op picture. Is it visible to all? Hello? Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Yes, sir. Case number three. This is once again a 2.6 kg neonate. It's a two days old. It's a C-section full-term baby. There is a oral teratoma, query teratoma. So now I would like to share his video. This is the teratoma. This is the way I intubated the neonate. There was some difficulty during intubation. The tube size is almost three number. It's a plain endotracheal tube. One of my assistant, he is a very good pediatric surgeon in our area, Dr. Adar Shebre. He used to do a lot of cases together in our area. So this is the tube. Basically, I could not negotiate tube for some time, but finally I could intubate this patient without any desaturation. Try to prepare a movie so background music is not up to the mark, but still, I think it's okay. Last case is a four years male child. There is a history of foreign body uh, in bronchus. The history of foreign body bronchus engagement is in the morning at around nine o'clock, somewhere near in Telegao. That patient was moving into a lot of hospitals. And it's, um, I remember it's a Saturday evening at eight o'clock. A fanatic call I received from one of the big pediatric hospital. They were telling that time once I saw the baby, that time his pulse rate was around 160 per minute, 160 to 180 per minute. SpO2 is around 60% with high flow oxygen. So my protocol in pediatric anesthesia, it's preparation, induction, maintenance, and extubation. In foreign body bronchus, I used to, every time there is a bronchoscopy, I used to induce the patient with glyco 
propofol and scopolamine and fentanyl so i want to show you is his video this is the x ray of the child this is a foreign body it's people you see it's a tur dal the shape of tur dal is quite grow bigger inside this was the microscope which is recently i bought that is a magrath mac look at his epiglottis and this is after removal of the foreign body after the procedure child was maintaining with uh, almost 4 liters o2 and saturation was around 94 to 96% it was little bit tachypneic but fortunately patient went home to speak without any problem this is the trick here for a moment i used to flush this hocal pods with the steroid and adrenaline uh, conclude my talk there is rise in neonatal cases but fortunately there is very high success rate without any mortality or morbidity in a neonate because we developed a regional technique and very well balanced nicu nowadays they are managing there are possibility that me we, we may encounter in a life threatening mishaps like a titanic ship of the titanic which has collapsed with even though it has optimum preparation basically pediatric surgery is nothing but a pediatric it's a team work if you want to land on the mars without a, a single man cannot do all these activities you need a very nice team as is isro women scientist and that to in optimum price then i would like to tell you something about this there should be a proper case selection apart from proper case selection there should be a proper place also proper surgical colleague and proper help that is also important there should be a optimum preparation last time in our country there we had a very massive helicopter crash and in that one of the dialogue of one of the expert he said even if we have artificial intelligence optimum preparation but still air travel is not 100% safe is same like that even if we have optimum people skilled people very good backup system very good icu nicu still there is a mortality during anesthesia or during surgical procedure informed high risk consent is always important nowadays because of our medical suits there are a lot of cases coming in a court of law thanks a lot for your patient hearing thank you thank you sir thank you for such a wonderful and very informative uh, presentation sir now we will proceed with the interactive session now i request dr shahbaz hasnain sir can you please share your experience or knowledge in the pediatric anesthesia sir uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen first of all i would like to thank the society of anesthesiologists pimpri chichwad sapc for giving me this opportunity to share this session I must compliment Dr. Maya Balirao, the president of SAPC, for doing a wonderful job. Under her dynamic leadership, the society has earned a very good reputation in the country. I must say, and recently she, uh, I mean, the branch was awarded the best city branch award, which is a great achievement uh, for this uh, society. They also got second prize for uh, World Anesthesia Day at national level. and as well as second prize for public awareness this is a great achievement and it shows the level of dedication and commitment that the entire team has under her leadership and this monthly clinical meeting i must say is is uh, very nice especially for the budding anesthesiologists residents and our young colleagues i'm sure it would really benefit them if they actually in fact today's 
uh, deliberation has been very nice. Dr. Ashish uh, touched upon uh, most of the aspects and nuances of anesthesia, which is uh, very much required to be understood by our young colleagues. So, uh, uh, and uh, Dr. Shishagar actually touched upon a very, very uh, difficult topic of neonate uh, anesthesia, uh, which, which uh, in fact, I thought that uh, uh, only we are doing uh, high-tech anesthesia in our uh, hospital, but here I've seen uh, Dr. Shishagar has done wonderfully well. And uh, he must have worked in very uh, big centers to have so much of experience and ex expertise. Hats off to him. So uh, we, we, uh, I don't have much experience in a uh, long time back. I had done uh, this uh, uh, tracheus visual fistula case. And uh, uh, here, here we have a pediatric anesthetist who performs, uh, who administers anesthesia on a regular basis, Dr. Sonal, she is here. She would, I would request her to share her experience about this uh, uh, neonatal anesthesia, if she can. Dr. Sonal, yeah, you have any? You, yeah, thank you, sir. It was a wonderful presentation by both of the speakers. Uh, and I really appreciate that uh, they do in private practice. We uh, perform all this anesthesia of neonet and all in an institute where we have a good backup. So really, I congratulate both of them uh, and Shirsagar sir that uh, in private practice and private setup, they are doing very nice cases. Uh, neonets we also do, but the frequency is not uh, so higher. So we have the experience of good cases as only tracheoesophageal fissure is not a plain tracheoesophageal fissure. They always have some cardiac problems and associated problems. And if the defect is more than uh, four vertebral levels, then uh, we generally don't prefer extubation on table. Otherwise, uh, hello? Hello? Yeah, ah, we can, we yeah. can hear. We can hear. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, uh, we also prefer to extubate on table if uh, rest of the conditions, but many of the times in neonates, as they come in the institute, they either have high pulmonary hypertension or PPHN. So intraoperatively only the saturation goes on and off. And that's why we, in some cases, we don't prefer to extubate on table. Otherwise, if the baby is fully okay with the eco and saturation, then we extubate on table. And the routine preparation of all the neonate, we follow the same protocols of uh, hy preventing hypothermia, preparation of the airway, as nowadays we have all the new conduit of Buji, then IGEL, LMA. So even if difficult intubation is there, we can cross away through it. We even have fiber optic also. So that also standby we can do. And we have also done a good tumor case of amyloblastoma, which was an oral tumor where we did uh, with a fiber optic standby, but uh, Dr. Dharmesh Gandhi was also there with that case. So we had uh, a very great, but in difficult airways, we only prefer first to do with spontaneous, look at check scopy and then only give relaxant if the uh, scopy vision is okay. So those type of protocols and preterm neonates, we also do, do in awake caudal. Uh, as uh, now we have ROPI vacant, so we can give 1.25 ml. With bupivacan, it was difficult to give in the dose of 1.25 ml because it crosses the toxic level. So we used to combine xylokin, adrenaline, and sensorkin. But nowadays, with ropivacan, we can go through it. And uh, supramajor cases, we are doing with all arterial line, central line, and all the monitoring. So a lot of cases, and not only this. Uh, recently, we did kyphoscoliosis cases also. So all types of uh, fraternity are being covered plus cardiac cases are also covered. So a lot of experience we are getting in our institute. So if anybody is interested to do pediatric fellowship, they are welcome to do, and we all welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Hasna and sir. And thank you, Sonal Madam, for giving such an informative knowledge to us. Okay. Now we will have a question answer session. So there, there is one question. Madam, Seema, Madam, yes. can we take uh, yes. a question? Yes. Huh, we can yeah, take yeah, a question. Yes. 
Yeah, please do take the question answers. There's one question in the chat box. And if yeah. There is one question. How you manage the flu? Uh, the question is for Ashish Kumar, sir. Uh, how will you calculate the fluids and how will you prepare the fluids for this pediatric patient? Yes, ma'am. I'm sharing the screen. So uh, basically, the isotonic, isotonic fluids are the uh, drug uh, fluids of choice. And uh, along with that, we add dextrose to it so that uh, there is chances of hypoglycemia are reduced. Now, for premature neonates, we use 10% glucose. For term units, we use 5% glucose. Older infants, 2.5% glucose. And more than one year, we can use 1% glucose. And to prepare the same, uh, if we take a pint of 500 ml uh, RL, we can use, uh, we can add 100 cc of 50% dextrose or 200 cc of 25% dextrose. Now, while this is being prepared, if we want to add uh, 20, 200 cc of 25% dextrose, we remove the uh, 200 ml of RL from the uh, uh, RL bottle and add the 25% dextrose. So the final concentration comes to 10% of uh, solution. For 5% of uh, dextrose solution, we add 50 cc of 50% 50, uh, 50 dextrose and 100 cc of 25% dextrose. We can uh, prepare the 2.5% solution with 25 cc of 50% uh, dextrose and 50 cc of 25% dextrose. Now, if uh, we are using a burette set, then we can prepare the solution in the burette set of 50 ml or 100 ml uh, solution and add the percentage of uh, dextrose accordingly so that only the limited fluid we will give, calculated fluid we can give with the burette set. But, uh, and uh, with burette set for neonates and infants, the calculated fluid will go as per the requirement of the case. For older children, we can use the micro drip sets if the burette sets are not available. And uh, micro drips have the uh, drip rate of one ml is uh, 60 drops, 60 micro drops. So accordingly, we can calculate the fluid which we are giving per minute. And we can give the fluids. And the holiday cigar formula, which we have uh, just seen, is 4 ml per kg of the children up to 10 kg of weight. So 20 ml per kg per hour of the fluid for maintenance. If the child is of 15 kg, then for first 10 kg, we will prepare a 40 ml solution. And next 5 kg, 40 plus 2 ml per kg of 5 ml, that is 10 ml, 40 plus 10, that is 50 ml per hour. If the child is of 24 kg, then the total solution will be 40 ml of first 10 kg, 20 ml of second 10 kg. So uh, 20 kg will be 60 ml and next five, uh, 4 kg will be 64 ml. Total will be 64 ml of maintenance per uh, am I clear about this? So that I can go ahead. Yeah, Kastani, can I can I add one thing regarding the IGC yes, sir. management? Yes, please, sir. Yes, Basically, please, sir. Ashish, what you are telling is absolutely correct. But in a private practice, what I have developed a formula. If there is a major case, the simple formula is 10 ml per kg per hour. If it is a moderate surgery, it's a 6 ml per kg per hour and it's a minor case it's a 4 ml per kg per hour that too i am talking about the maintenance fluid hello yes that is uh, uh, that is uh, a simpler formula uh, yeah, according yeah, to yeah. case uh, size that is uh, uh, true but uh, when we uh, want to be really precise and for a longer durations of case uh, holiday cigar formula is uh, accepted all over the world. Well, then, my uh, apart from 
apart from the maintenance fluid we need to cover for the losses during the surgery like the starvation fluid if the baby is starving for the longer duration which we calculate as hours of starvation into maintenance fluid and if there is a blood loss we replace the blood loss so that makes the complete situation along with that uh, if the urine output is more then we need to replace the urine output as one third of the urine output total volume in the crystalloid format so that the uh, fluids will be replaced in total okay there is one question heman sir this question is for you please elaborate more on level regional caudal catheter yeah very good question what can madam it's very nice actually the length of a catheter it's a very randomly placed honestly speaking because in a private setup scientifically if you have a evg machine then it's nothing like it you can have that you can uh, introduce epidural catheter to the caudal space and fix it according to the what is your expected level of analgesia but in my practice what i would do i would throw the catheter through from the caudal space i used to this is my um, teachers teaching to me long back when i was in jj hospital that to dr bharati kulkarni awalgaonkar i really admire to her she is my mentor my teacher in a pediatric anesthesia what she used to do she used to take a length suppose patients incision as t5 t6 level so from caudal space to that t4 t5 level incision it's a it's a very random calculation from that level we used to thread catheter from caudal space to that level and probably with the experience and all we could judge whether that analgesic effect of a local or outside is acted or not so this is the way we used to do catheterization in a caudal space in older adults older children above one year we used to do lumbar catheterization or the thoracic catheterization that is very easy that way thank you sir uh, now nilavati uh, uh, i have a one question for dr shesagar okay, so what, uh, which fluid do you use for this neonate actually uh, i used to prefer normal saline okay. and i used to give boluses i would depend on the basically most of the neonates they are coming from a nicu the so nicu people they already use maintenance fluids like a dextrose so we least bother about the dextrose we need to replace only the losses during surgery so i used to prefer normal saline and one more thing i want to add basically as the, in adult it is okay that is 1s to 3 formula 1s for um, suppose one drop of blood is three drops of a uh, normal saline being collected but in a neonate i used to replace blood with the blood especially in a pediatric population less than 3 years uh yes sir i agree with that and if the blood loss is more than 10% of the uh, Uh, blood volume then definitely we need to replace uh, blood with blood there is one more question in the chat box for heman sir for you this question is can you please elaborate anesthesia man management in foreign body bronchus case my anesthesia formula in a foreign body bronchus is a glycopyrrolate then injection profofor in a dose of 5 mg per kg it's double the what we are using for induction it's a 5 mg per kg profofol then 1 to 2 uh, microgram per kg of a fentanyl and then a scolin and after the procedure what i used to do i take a, a 100 ml of normal saline in that i used to put one ampoule of adrenaline and a 100 mg of ifcolin and i used to take small small gauze pieces soak in the adrenaline and uh, this one of uh, ifcolin and that i used to apply on the ocal cords probably you must have appreciated in my last video i have done a laryngoscopy and with the laryngoscopy i used to take uh, with the artery forcep i used to apply directly on the cord and on the epiglottis so what i observed since then, there is hardly any laryngospasm hardly any edema post operative hello hello 
Hello. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. There is one more question. Which size needle you use for caudal? If it's a only caudal epidural or caudal anesthesia for hernia or circumcision, phimosis, that time I used to prefer use 24 gauge needle. And for catheter insertion, I used to use 18 gauge routine hypodermic needle. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I also have one question, sir, for you. Uh, when you give regional anesthesia, what type of sedation you use to uh, make this uh, child quiet, sir? So, glyco, propofol, and fentanyl. This is my combination. Uh, before uh, this uh, regional Cordial. anesthesia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I feel propofol is the best drug, honestly speaking. It okay. gives a little bit of a skeletal and smooth muscle relaxation. So, we could ventilate. We can very well assess the airway of the child. If we okay. could we, if we could ventilate the child with profofol, then yes. we can in, very well intubate the child without any problem or without any trouble. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, one more question from my side: uh, role of antacid and antiemetics for the sclerotic patients? I want to ask. Yes, you. yes, there is a definitely a role of antiemetics and sedative uh, this antacids because any surgical procedure is a stressful procedure. And in that, in, even in a pediatric patient, they have acidic secretion. So we can definitely advise to give IMSET and uh, PAN40 because we don't use acylog or ranitidine because we don't have testing of G6PD deficiency in most of the children. So we never, I never use uh, ranitidine in a pediatric population. I always prefer to use PAN40 and IMSET or Ondansetron or Reglan, whichever drug is available. Probably I use all three. Reglan, MSET, and PAN40. And one more thing as Ashish very well planned, it's very important to ask the birth history of a child because birth, why it is important, whether child is preterm, full term, whether child was having any NICU admission because those child who are having NICU admissions, they have pulmonary hypertension. Probably as I already mentioned about the G6PD deficiency, we never know which child is having which G6PD deficiency. And one more thing, Regarding the bleeding, some child, they have a hemophilia-like factor, deficiency of hemophilia. So we need to take proper history of a child. We need to ask all these questions, whether there is a more bleeding after any injury or is there any other thing which is uncommon to that particular child. We need to ask parents very well. Pianacetic assessment is very important, especially in a pediatric patient. One more thing I want to add. Most of the child, as Ashish mentioned, all the, they are obligate nasal breathers. So we need to ask the history of oral breathing or snoring because most of the children, they have adenoids. And adenoids leads to oral breathing or noisy breathing. That is also important. We need to ask before giving anesthesia. Okay. Thank you, sir. There is one more question in the chat box. Is it always advisable to induce putting LMA before regional? So basically, in anesthesia, is I always say, I, I always believe medicine is not like a two into two, four. Sometimes it is zero, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's nil, nothing. One size don't fit to all. That is what that is what my assumption in anesthesia or anything or in our life. So it's your choice. If you are comfortable without LMA, you can do without MLA. If you are trained with the LMA, you can start using LMA. There is hardly any issue. But what I feel or what I observed in last my 15, 20 years of practice, if we could minimum handle the children's airway, it's nothing like it. Because always children's airways, they are hyperreactive. Once you do suctioning, LMA, intubation, whatever, possibility that postoperatively that child may land up in a laryngospasm or bronchospasm. So my theory is that minimum handling without any this thing, just regional plus sedation in the form of profile or fentanyl. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, one question from... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. I just asked, wanted to ask you about this uh, pre-medication. Uh, what is the practice in your institute, uh, Dr. Shishagar? What do you use uh, in a crying child who is uh, inconsolable, who is not getting quite despite uh, all efforts? What pre-medication do you prefer? procedure, sir? For any pro procedure, a child of one or two years old has come for anatomy or something. Achha, crying child. Crying child, uh, what premeditation do you prefer? 
in your institute? Basically, I used to prefer for crying child is a nasal spray of a midazolam, 0.5 milligram per kg. That will be a really useful. I mean, nowadays, most of the pediatrician intensivists, they are using proof of all plus this one, uh, nasal spray of a midazolam. We in our cardiac practices, we used to use in, uh, actually injection ketamine and uh, uh, this thing, uh, atropine. So, uh, and that used to be very effective intramuscular. So Do what, you I, what I observed regarding about ketamine, ketamine is a very true, honestly speaking. But in a pediatric population, it increases the secretions. This is my observation. I don't say it's wrong, or right or wrong, but mm. compared to ketamine, I will always prefer Profofol. Profofol is really a wonderful drug. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, but when you don't get access, then I think uh, unless you get access from four, you can't. Get so, it. Honestly, just I want to cover that point, sir. Any patient for pediatric surgery, it's my first prerequisite that IV line should be taken in the wards in the room, not in theater. This is absolutely a wrong practice if you are taking your IV line in a OT. Then entire thing becomes a messy. Child started crying. Then once or twice, we are not able to cannulate the vent. Then again, we become unnecessarily stressful. So it's my suggestion, better you take IV line in the ward or in the room. Yeah, that is true. If uh, anesthetic goes to the ward and does it, if you leave it to the ward sister, then they spoil all the veins. No, sir. Sisters <laughs> are very well expert to taking a even They are more expert than a doctor, sir. <laughs> what about triclofos? Have you got any experience of using triclofos, which is being used uh, by cardiologists for... Uh, Echocardiography to you know to quieten the child. No, oh, sir, I don't have experience of it. Sir, I used to sir triclofos, that is pedicloril, no, sir. Yeah, pedicloril. Yeah, yeah. Point to seven five ml per kg. We use uh, half an hour before the procedure, sir, and the child. Is so yeah, even I have used uh, triclofos for beta procedure. So it is uh, half an hour to 45 minutes before we can give and then child is uh, sleeping and you can do this beta uh, investigation. Yeah, we have also used it and we found it very effective and it is very safe actually. You know, if, if uh, even yeah, after the first dose, uh, they don't become quiet. Yeah, yeah, very very dose. So anyway, uh, I think very yes, well presented. Yes. Both the speakers have uh, actually... Uh, uh, done a very good job, very lucid, very informative and very practical tips that you have given and it will really help uh, all our uh, anesthetists to, you know, for the future uh, cases that they do. So basically uh, for uh, pediatric case, the most important thing is the safety of the child, which is of paramount importance and for that you have to have very close monitoring of the child. In fact, uh, you know, uh, one should be aware of any, you know, always be having a high level of suspicion for any adverse event because unlike uh, unlike an adult the child doesn't give you much time you know they will suddenly go into hypoxia bradycardia and arrest so it doesn't they don't give you much time so uh, you know a high level of uh, perioperative monitoring post operative monitoring is very important and that should be always be considered when you're doing a pediatric case Yes, That's about sir. all from my side. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Maya, madam, there is one more question in the chat box. Can we take it? Yes, yes, you can take it. No problem. Okay. Uh, which uh, inhalational uh, you prefer and what about anesthesia for MRI? Sonal, madam, you also can answer. Heaven, sir, you also can answer. Anyone? So again, what is the question? Yes, sir, question is which inhalational you prefer and what about anesthesia for MRI? Inhalation is always, I think, sevoflurane is the most favored uh, inhalation agent uh, in a pediatric case. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. That, uh, I think most of us use that only, and, and you know, and that's very safe and doesn't cause any, you know, sort of irritation of the airway, and it's very well taken by, the, by, a, by a child. And, and what about anesthesia for MRI? So I think what can madam will answer this question because she has a lot of cases. Of she MRI. only asked this she question. She only asked, I don't know, madam will tell oh, yeah. what she is yeah. what she's using. She does many cases. Hmm. What can madam? <laughs> to me, Sangha. What MRI madam? we can use, madam, we can use propofol. It's a very good drug. Actually, we, we can also use ketofol, you know. 
both ketamine and propofol combination at the uh, yes. uh, dose of one milligram per kg body weight each. And I found it very, very nice. You know, it gives you a, a very good sedation and, and the child doesn't move. So most important thing about MRI is that, you know, the child uh, should not move. So I found ketofol uh, very good uh, uh, drug uh, for MRI. Yes, thank you, sir. Basically, just I, I want to add, Abukasnada, madam. Basically, I think two years back, we had an accident at Bangkok. Almost 20, 13 children, they were stuck inside the caves. Okay. So in that time, I think one of our anesthetists went into the went into the caves with the water. There are a lot of uh, saving people. And in those 12 children are anesthetized. And then they have taken outside the caves. So probably that time, they have used mixture of uh, glycopyrrolate, midazolam, ketamine, and fentanyl. Because they thought ketamine is a respiratory stimulant, though child will be calm, but there should not be any respiratory depression. So yes, that sir. could be the formula we can very well use in MRI, during MRI. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now I hand over to Maya Madam. Maya Madam will give a vote of thanks. Okay, okay, Madam. Madam, please. Dr. Hemant, I would like to ask you one question. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Madam. Good word. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yes, it's not about the neonatal anesthesia, it's about the pediatric anesthesia. Do you get the spinal needles? Do you get the spinal for the age group between uh, the weight between 15 kg to 25 or 30 kg? Spinal anesthesia. Mm, yes, 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 you we can give a spinal anesthesia. But only but do, you practice it? do you practice it? No, 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 madam. I never use a spinal anesthesia in children. Because what I observed, basically, spinal anesthesia is a very, very short acting in a, uh, especially in a pediatric population. Yes, metabolic rate is very high. Yeah, as they have very high CSF circulation, yes. there is a more production of the CSF. So drug metabolism is very fast, second, first yes. thing. And second thing, uh, most what I observed, because in Pune, there are two, three children after post, uh, uh, after spinal anesthesia, they developed a spinal headache. So probably pediatric surgeons, they are not compatible with the spinal anesthesia. Even the level goes very, even the level goes very high, very ah, quickly. Basically, to calm the child, we need to give uh, uh, yeah. years. Short yes. Yeah. And cordial, then, cordial is such a wonderful asset to as a pediatric anesthetist. It saved so many children with this. You are not audible, you are not clear. Uh, please, Cordal, what was you, do you do after 10 kg weight patient? You, are, you, you meant to ask me, you are asking me the volume. Volume is, madam, uh, 1 ml per kg. But even if 20 kg, we can give 20. Yeah, yeah, you can give 20. I can, give, I can go after 25 ml. Uh, there is without, no dilution, without dilution. Without dilution. No, 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 not at all. Basically, you need to calculate the dosage. In children, we I used to use three milligram per kg dose of a sensor cane. So in that, I used to add uh, normal saline because people used to say there are a lot of papers. They said don't add any additives in a caudal space, especially adrenaline, because xylocaine adrenaline. They are thinking they have a paper in later life they may land up in a backache or some sacroiliary, some infections. So they are telling, they are avoiding all additives in a sensor can except opioids, opioids plus sensor can or rupee per kg or one ml per kg. That is the dose that is. Volume can be 20 ml, so no problem, madam, no problem. For the post-operative pain patients. Post uh, regarding, yeah. regarding my uh, formula for MRI, as you said rightly, thanks a lot, Hyman. Uh, because I've been doing uh, MRI for so many years and yeah. maybe that is my formula. It, it's yeah. like a child uh, crying uh, and it, uh, uncooperative in the MRI. Obviously, even the, with the parents around, they won't sleep unless yeah, they... Yeah. Uh, so it is like, like a glycobidas ketamine intramuscular, yeah. depending on the 5 kg, uh, five milligram per kg of ketamine. 
and glycoin made us intramuscular let the child sleep generally they don't have vein because either they are referred by a general practitioner or by consultant so they don't have vein uh, un unless and until they have been referred by institute and then following that put a uh, 100 ns uh, 100 uh, mg of propofol with 100 ml uh, ns and uh, with micro drip set uh, put uh, as the child needs with oxygen and uh, there is a shoulder uh, mold uh, uh, shoulder extension so that the child uh, can breathe well and uh, nasal oxygen to uh, support the patient saturation and uh, cover them well with either with cotton uh, wrap so that uh, they don't feel uh, they don't get hypothermic mm -hmm. and once the mri is done it generally takes a uh, half an hour and more sometimes more with contrast and uh, once they come out of that i give them 25% glucose so that i uh, that i feel that the children are most of the time they are hypoglycemic and to wake them up 25% is uh, is a solution so generally they wake up immediately on the recovery table so this is what my formula for mri if somebody wants to more need more in detail i can but, but sometimes pedicloril of course it helps but it gives lot of uh, post op sedation so i don't advise and uh, sometimes i have to take vein even Uh, in the uh, uh, mri light and ot light um, they have to have vein in the sunlight so sunlight is a better uh, to see the vein because we more, we don't find vein finder there and vein finder is not at many centers so uh, we once we have to uh, uh, you have to take a vein with patient uh, shifting in the sunlight see see to that that the vein is been seen put a 24 size cannula and then again take the patient in the mri room so this this was used to be my formula nowadays there are institute which uh, generally the patients are referred from institute with uh, needle is uh, intracase is already on but when i have when i have worked long way back like in uh, 2000 and onwards so way back that they never used to be intracase so i used to put intracase in the sunlight and then take the patient back in the mri room and this was my formula but 25% definitely helps for the patient to wake up thank you madam thank you so much yeah. uh, now we'll go ahead with the vote of thanks uh, there are i think few questions and we will arrange one more cme on pediatric anesthesia and that that will give uh, really good insight himant i think you should take a lead at to organize a big event on pediatric anesthesia so okay. uh, uh, i would like to uh, thanks uh, respected hasneen sir hod dy patil medical college Uh, to spare his uh, by uh, spare yes, his time uh, in his busy busy schedule he has accepted our invitation and he has graced the occasion as a chairperson and he has taken participation in the interactive session thank you sir thank you very much and thank you ma'am and thank, thank you very much for your nice words for our branch and your uh, most wonderful. welcome for any other activities in our branch sir I, i must say you people are doing a wonderful job uh, very high level of you know academic uh, deliberation was going on in, and i have learned a lot because i am not into much into pediatric yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, it was a very very nice uh, education for me also thank you so much yes. thank you sir thank you and uh, my uh, special thanks to dr heman chirsagar my dear friend and who has presented wonderful movies and he is the hero of that movies and he is really inspiring hero for us <laughs> thank you so much hemant for accepting our invitation and presenting your pediatric anesthesia experiences with us uh, thank you dr ashish uh, who has been uh, who has uh, come for the first time to present the case in uh, on sapc platform uh, it was a wonderful and nice presentation and really we learned a lot it was a like a recapping a recatching of uh, all the past whatever we have forgotten thank you so much and uh, we have few announcement uh, before that i would like to thanks dr sonal katavkar dr nilavati and vatkar uh, uh, madam for giving their inputs and intera uh, doing interactive uh, question and sir in this uh, webinar thank you so much and uh, we have few announcement like uh, we are celebrating this year i say national uh, platinum jubilee year and we have many academic and non academic programs 
one non academic program is we have organized on the 9th of january that is walkathon so dr tushar uh, rajput and dr sachin wag have taken the lead and they are uh, they are the coordinators for this walkathon i invite all the sapc members uh, to and dy patil of course to uh, take participation in this walkathon and details will be posted by our honorary secretary dr seema suryamshi on the uh, whatsapp so please do join uh, in the walkathon our uh, there are few non academic programs as well we will be uh, conveying you on whatsapp and one more big event which we will be organizing in uh, maybe in couple of months that is pg assembly so please do participate actively in these uh, activities uh, conducted by sapc thank you so much thank you uh, thank you nilavati for coordinating such a beautiful uh, webinar thank you so much thank you all thank delegates you. for um, joining uh, with us thank you so much have a good day and uh, wish you a very happy new year thank you thank you ma'am thank you everyone thank you Uh, Sima, you can end up the program. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, madam. Yes. Sir.